Right, today's lesson is 9-6, and we're going to solve uh, quadratic equations by factoring. When you found the zeros of a quadratic equation, you were finding the actual solutions to them. And we know that finding zeros means we find where it crosses the x-axis. We found out that they can cross in one place, they can cross the x-axis in two places, or they could not cross the x-axis at all. And what these actual, where they're crossing the x-axis, the zeros are actually the solutions to the quadratic. Another method that we're going to learn today to actually find these zeros or solutions is we're going to be able to solve by factoring and by using the zero product property. So what we're finding today, if you were to graph it, is where it crosses the x-axis. Again, it says another method is to factor and use the zero product property. The zero pro property says if the product of two quantities equals zero, at least one of the quantities equals zero. So if A times B equals zero, then A equals zero and or B equals zero. That's what the zero product property says. We need you to write down what is in the blue box right here. You do not have to write the words, just what's in the blue box. If you need to pause the video now in order to get down what's in the blue box, feel free to do that. All right, so here's your first example. Go ahead and write it down. Y equals X squared minus 6X plus 8. Now we're going to solve by factoring, but the first thing we need to do here is just set this quadratic equal to zero because, again, that's what we're finding. We're finding the zeros. We're figuring out what X's can we plug in so that we get zero for Y. So I'm going to change this just a little bit and say x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. So there's your first step is to set your quadratic equal to 0 because, again, that's what we're finding. The zeros are solutions. All right, now I'm going to actually just factor this just exactly like we learned how to do in Chapter 8. I'm going to put a 1 in front of that x squared since there's nothing there. I'm going to look for a GCF, but 1, 6, and 8 doesn't have a GCF, and they don't all have X's. So I'm going to go through and multiply my first and my last. So 1 times 8 is 8, so I'm going to write 8. I'm going to look at my factor sheet, and I'm going to list my factors of 8. That would be 1 and 8, and 2 and 4. Now, I'm only going to have one column because the 8 is positive, but since my 6 is negative, every single one of these has to be negative. So now I'm looking for the ones that add to negative 6, and that would be negative 2 and negative 4 add to negative 6. So negative 2 times negative 4 equals positive 8. Negative 2 plus negative 4 gives me the negative 6 in the middle. So I'm going to split the 6x or the negative 6x up into negative 2x and negative 4x. Bring down my plus 8 and my 1x squared. And my equals 0. Then I'm going to factor by grouping. I'm going to group the first two together. The one thing that 1 and 2 have in common is a 1. Both of these also have an x, so I'm going to pull out a 1 and an x. I'm going to divide. 1 divided by 1 is 1. I had two x's. I took one out. I have one left. Negative 2 divided by 1 is negative 2. And I had an x, and I took it out. Then I'm going to look over here. Now I'm going to look at 4 and 8 on my factor sheet and find out that they have a 4 in common. And since this front number is negative, I'm going to take out a negative 4. Again, take, can't take out an x with this one because the 8 does not have one. So I'm going to say negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1. And bring down my x. I'm going to say 8 divided by negative 4 is negative 2. Notice what's in the parentheses is the same, and it should be. So my factors, and I'm not going to leave the ones in front of here, are x minus 4 and x minus 2 equals 0. Now, this is where you were able to stop in chapter 8. Now we're actually using it to solve. So to actually solve the quadratic, I'm going to set each one of my factors equal to 0. 
So this equals to zero, I'm gonna say x minus four equals zero, and x minus two equals zero. Now I'm gonna solve each equation here. I'm gonna add the four to both sides, and x equals four. Here I'm gonna add the two to both sides and say x equals two. I'm gonna put my answer in set notation, just like I did with my zeros when I found them from my graph. Two comma four. So my two zeros or solutions are two and four, which means if I were to graph this, it would cross the x-axis at two and four. Okay. Now we're gonna check this one. This will be the only one that we check on your video for time's sake. First one I'm gonna check is the two. So I'm gonna go back to my original. And I'm gonna say x squared minus six x plus eight equals zero. And everywhere I see an x, I'm gonna plug in a two. Two squared minus four times two plus eight. Now when you're doing this in class, you're more than welcome to plug this in your calculator and make sure that it gives you zero. I'm gonna say two squared is four. This gives me minus 12 plus eight. And that gives me zero equals zero. So my two works. Now we need to make sure that the four works. So again, I'm still checking with the x squared minus six x plus eight. Everywhere I see an x, I'm gonna plug in a four. So four squared minus six times four plus eight equals zero. Four squared is 16. Six times four is negative 24 plus eight equals zero. And that gives me zero equals zero, and that works out. Please make sure that you have all the work and the check written before you move on. All right, go ahead and write down number two. F of x equals two x squared plus five x. Okay. Now this time we changed the y to an f of x, but we know that f of x and y actually mean the same thing. It's just f of x specifically means a function. So first thing again we need to do is to set this equal to zero, because again, that's what we're finding, is we're finding the zeros. Okay. This time we're given a binomial instead of a trinomial. And we know that the only two things we can do with factoring a binomial are perfect squares and GCF. So first thing we're gonna look for here is a GCF. If I look at two and five, they don't have a GCF. However, both of these have an X. So I'm gonna pull out an X. When I pull out an X, I'm gonna bring down my two because I didn't take out any numbers. And then I have X squared and I take, or I had two X's and I took out one, so I have one left plus five, and then I had an x, but I took that x out, so there is no x's left, equals zero. Now I need to check to make sure that what I'm left with is not a perfect square. And two and five are definitely not perfect squares. So that's all I can do to factor that one. So what I can do now is I can set each one of my factors, this one and this one, equal to zero. Now I have to set this x equal to zero because it actually is a variable. So I'm gonna say x equals zero and two x plus five equals zero and I'm gonna solve each one. Now this one, there's nothing to solve. It's just x equals zero. This one, I'm gonna to have to subtract the five from both sides and divide by the two. And I get x equals negative five over two. Or I could actually also say that that is negative 2.5 because it is a pretty decimal. So then again, I'm gonna set, um, or I'm gonna list my answers in set notation, least to greatest, so I'm gonna say negative 2.5 first, comma zero. So here are my zeros or my solutions, negative 2.5 and zero. Meaning that if I were to graph this, it would cross the x-axis at negative 2.5 and zero. Take a minute, again, we're not gonna check this one since we checked the first one. Make sure you have all of the work written before you move on. All right, go ahead and write down number three. We have three x squared plus four x equals seven. 
Now this time, this one doesn't look right. Before we've had a y or we've had an f of x that we set equal to zero. But here, I still need it to be set equal to zero. So I'm gonna need to move this seven before I can do anything else. So it's a positive seven. So I'm gonna subtract seven from both sides. Now I need, to, I need for it to be in standard ax squared plus bx plus c form. So I'm gonna say three x squared plus four x minus seven equals zero. So now that I have it set equal to zero, I can go ahead and factor. I look at three, four, and seven to make sure that they don't have a GCF and they don't. So I can go ahead and multiply three times negative seven is negative 21. So I'm gonna list my factors for negative 21. Since it's negative, I'm gonna list two different columns, negative one and 21, one and negative 21 negative three and seven, and three and negative seven. Now that I've got my factors listed, I'm looking for the one that adds to a positive four, and that's negative three and seven add to a positive four. So I'm gonna break that positive four up into a negative three x and a positive seven x. Bring down my minus seven and my three x squared and my equals zero. Then I'm gonna factor by grouping. Three and three have a three in common. These also have an X. So then I'm gonna divide three divided by three is one. I had two X's, I took one out so I have one left. Negative three divided by three is negative one. I had an X and I took it out. So now I'm gonna group the second two together. I have seven and seven. They have a seven in common, and it's a positive seven since that front number right there is positive. Seven divided by seven is one. Bring down my x. Negative seven divided by seven is negative one equals zero. So then I'm gonna list my two factors. I have three x plus seven and x minus one. And again, I can't stop here because I'm not just factoring, I'm solving by factoring. So I have to set each one of these equal to zero. Three X plus seven equals zero and X minus one equals zero. I'm gonna subtract my seven and divide by my three. And X equals negative seven over three. Here, I just have to add my one to both sides and x equals one. Let's get that up just a little bit. So I'm gonna put my answers in my set notation. Negative seven over three and one. Please make sure that you have all of that work written before you move on. All right, go ahead and get down to number five. It's y equals 2x squared minus 14x plus 24. The first thing I'm going to do is set all of this equal to zero. It's 2x squared minus 14x plus 24 equals zero. And now I'm going to look and see if there's a GCF that I can factor out. And I can see here that I have two... 14 and 24 and they all have a common factor of 2 so I am able to go ahead and pull out factor out a 2 here so I'm going to say 2 2 divided by 2 is 1 x squared negative 14 divided by 2 is going to give me negative 7 x and then 24 divided by 2 is going to give me 12 so now I'm going to factor by grouping I'm going to multiply my first term times my last term which is going to give me 12 because 1 times 12 equals 12 and here I'm going to list the factors of 12 I have to observe right here that I have a negative 7 in the middle so if I multiply two negatives they are going to give me a positive 12 so I'm looking at all of the factors of 12 as if they are all negative so I have negative 1 and negative 12 negative 2 and 
negative 6, negative 3, and negative 4. And I need to know which ones are going to add up and give me negative 7. So I can look right here at my negative 3 and negative 4. These two will add to give me negative 7. So I'm going to break down my negative 7x into a negative 3x minus 4x, bring down my 12, and bring down my x squared. Now I'm going to factor by grouping just like we have been all along. My first group, I can factor out an x, and that's going to leave me with x minus 3. Here I can factor out a negative 4, and that's going to leave me with x, sorry, I need a plus on there, minus 3, because positive 12 divided by negative 4 is going to give me negative 3. So now it's in parentheses matches. I have x minus 3, x minus 3 and x minus 4. I'm not quite done here because I have to remember that in the beginning I did pull out that 2. So I need to bring that down and put it in front of the parentheses. Now my answer is going to be My x minus 3 equals 0, and my x minus 4 equals 0. So when I add 3 on both sides, it's going to give me x equals 3. I'm going to add 4 on both sides, and it's going to give me x equals 4. So in my set notation, 3 comma 4. And this 2 only comes back into play when we check. We go back to the original problem up here with the 2 in it. So your final answer is in brackets 3, 4. Make sure you have all of that down before we move on. So I just realized that I numbered the last one number five, but actually it was the fourth one you guys had done. So we're just going to pretend that we did a number four, but in reality we just skipped it. And now we are going on to number six. So don't forget that we skipped number four, please. All right, so this one, we're going to go ahead and set it equal to zero. 4x <laughs> squared minus 25 equals zero. And you may recognize that this looks like those difference of squares factoring problems that we did where we have two perfect squares here together and all we have to do is break it down. Um, so 4x squared is the perfect square of 2x and 2x. And 25 is the perfect square of 5 times 5. And we know from all the work that we did in factoring that when I have two perfect squares and a minus sign in the middle, I can automatically set it up into two parentheses, one with a plus sign and one with a minus. So I'm going to bring down my two x's and bring down my fives. So I have two x plus five and two x minus five. All of that is set equal to zero. And now I can break it down in my two separate sets of parentheses to solve for x. So I have two x plus five equals zero and two x minus five equals zero. So here I'm going to subtract 5 on both sides. 2x equals negative 5. Here I'm going to add 5 on both sides. I have 2x equals positive 5. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. That's going to give me x equals negative 5 over 2 and x equals positive 5 over 2. That translates or divides out to be x equals negative 2.5 and x equals positive 2.5. So in my braces, I have negative 2.5 comma 2.5. Make sure you have all of that down before you move on. All right, go ahead and get down to number 7. It's x squared plus 9 equals 6x. The first thing we have to do is get this in the right form so we can set it equal to zero. So in order to do that we need to get our 6x to the other side of the equal sign. So we're going to subtract 6x on both sides. This is going to cancel and over here these don't come on because they're not like terms so we're going to write it in descending order. So we have x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals zero. 
So now we're able to factor. We're going to multiply. We're going to put a 1 here in front of this x because that's what's understood as being there. 1 times 9 equals 9. It's a positive 9, but if you notice, your middle term here is negative, so that means that we're going to be dealing with all negative factors of 9. So we have negative 1 times negative 9. Negative 3 times negative 3. And then we're going to look and see which of these we can add together to give us negative 6. So you see the negative 3 plus negative 3 will give us negative 6. So we're going to break down our negative 6x to negative 3x minus 3x, bring down our positive 9 and our x squared. And we're going to factor the first group by taking out an x, and that's going to leave us with x minus 3. And then the second group, we're going to take out a negative 3, and that's going to leave us with x minus 3 because 9 divided by negative 3 is negative 3. So now inside my parentheses, what I have matches, so I have x minus 3 and x minus 3. So now you probably notice that they match. We're going to set them equal to 0. Add 3 on both sides, and we're going to get x equals 3. Okay, so x equals 3, and now like I said, right here at this step, I notice that this parentheses and this parentheses match exactly. It's x minus 3. They are identical, so there's no point in me solving again because it's just going to be positive 3, and I'm not going to list it twice in my braces. So the answer here is that there's only one 0, and that is 3. So I'm going to show you real quick what this looks like on a graph so you can understand why we only have one 3. This would be the graph of this function. So you see right here is your only 3, so it's only crossing at one point in time. I'm sorry, this is your only 0. It's only crossing at that one point, the 3. So this is the end of your video. Um, make sure that you have all your notes when you come to class with you tomorrow. And let me give you your homework assignment. The top of the page there, write down your homework assignment. It's page 653, 7 through 17, and 48. So don't, don't start on that now. Just make sure you bring that with you to class tomorrow. Thank you for watching.